every parametric statistical test is built on certain assumptions. If our data violate those assumptions, any conclusions that we draw from that test could be incorrect. Therefore, it's important that we make sure our data meet the assumptions of the test that we're going to use. And there are two assumptions that are easy to address and fix early on in our research design. The first of these pre-data collection assumptions is to make sure that we have scale level data for our dependent variable. Those dependent variable data must be at the interval or ratio level. This is an absolute necessity for creating means. We cannot calculate a mean of nominal level data. This assumption can be easily addressed during our research construction. And the solution is to measure something. What I mean is that when you are doing your research design, as you are selecting a dependent variable, choose a validated instrument for your research. Choose a test or a scale that already exists for which there is peer-reviewed journal article information that you can rely on that tells you how this test is supposed to be scored. What is the scoring rubric? What do the scales mean? What are averages? How can they be compared to other scales? When you choose to measure something using a validated scale, the rest of us can tell how your research fits into the existing literature. What you should avoid is making up scales yourself. If you make up your own scale, if you design your own survey, then you may measure something, but it's really difficult to tell how it compares to others. You may remember the illustration when I was wearing those suspenders that were stretchy, that had a scale on them. They looked like a giant measuring tape. When you make up your own survey, that's a squishy, stretchy measurement. I mean, I could make up my own measurement scale and call it Dr. Daniel's measurements. But if I can't tell you how those measurements relate to inches or centimeters, what use is it? Yes, you can make up your own survey and you can measure something, but the rest of us won't know what it is. Therefore, make sure you're using a validated scale to measure your dependent variable. The second assumption that can be met during research design is the independence of scores. Each individual score in the sample should be independent of the others. There is no influence or connection between those scores. They're not correlated. They're not repeated measures. This is also an assumption that is very easy to meet during your research construction. Partly, it can be addressed using good random sampling techniques so that you know that each score is independent of the others. However, if you do not have independent data, if you have repeated measures data, before and after data, that is no problem at all as long as we know that before we do data collection. If you are using repeated measures, we're gonna switch from using an independent samples t-test to a repeated measures t-test. Or we'll go from using a one-way ANOVA to a repeated measures ANOVA. This is easy to fix. It's just important that we address this while we're doing our research design. Changes that you make during research design are the easiest changes you will ever make. This is one reason why when I'm working with doctoral students, if we're working on a dissertation and I'm on the committee, I will insist that when they're doing data collection, that they can tell me what they're gonna do with every single variable in their data set. If they're collecting data, that data must be important. Therefore, they should know what they're gonna do with each, with each variable before we begin. And if not, we're not ready to do data collection. When you can tell me what you're gonna do with every variable in your data set, once you eventually collect data, then when we get to chapter four and five, when you're writing up the results and explaining them, describing them, then life is going to go very smoothly for you. You get your data, you already know what you're going to do with it, and you simply follow that roadmap. What you want to avoid is stampeding onto data collection, thinking I'll figure it out later, 
And then once you have your data, realizing, oh, there were some things that I could have addressed back during research design, but because I didn't address them then, now I have faulty data. Now I have data that just don't work very well, and I'm gonna have to come up with some kind of workaround. It would have been so much easier if we would address these issues while we had the chance before we began data collection. So that's the importance of checking assumptions before we do data collection. It's really easy to fix at that point. However, there are some qualities of the data that we have no control over that we will not be able to address until we've done our data collection. Let's look at those next.